Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA CyberOps, Chapter 4, Network Protocols and Services. This is Section 4.4, Address Resolution Protocol, ARP. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain how the Address Resolution Protocol enables communication on the network, compare the role of the MAC address and the IP address, describe the purpose of ARP, and explain how ARP requests impact network and host performance. Section 4.4.1, MAC and IP. Destination on the same network. So for example, if we have a communication, if we want to communicate from this PC to this PC here. Now this PC, remember, is going to find out its own network address using its subnet mask. So for example, if we have 255.255.255, .255 the zero here that's a, that's a subnet mask and it is going to use an and in operation for example where one one and one one and one was equal in one and everything else was zero so zero plus one equals zero zero and zero equals zero one and zero equals zero so find out run it through that it's going to find out what network is it so for example it's going to find out okay my network id is 192 168.1.0 that's my IP address if for example say that I want to uh, ping or do anything access a device that's on the same network 192.168 so ping for example 192.168.1.50 this device is going to know that that IP address it's on the same network because it's going to use that IP address and its subnet mask run through it and find out that it's on the same network if it's on the same network now, source IP address is going to put his own IP address from the RAM. Find out, okay, what's, what's my IP address? Add it in there. Destination IP address, there's a there's few ways that you're going to find out the destination IP address. Destination IP address, it could be that you just typed it, right? Ping 192.168.150, put it in there. Other ways that he's going to find out the destination address is using DNS. And then he's going to put out his own MAC address. So source MAC address, his own source MAC address. He's going to find out in RAM as well. But the problem is the destination MAC address here. So it needs to find out what is this IP address, what is the destination MAC address, what is the MAC address. And that, for that, is going to look at the ARP table, address resolution protocol table. If, for example, it has access to it before, it will be there. So it's going to be a resolve an IP address to a MAC address on the table. If he hasn't seen it before, it's not, it's not going to, well, it's not going to be there. So it's, what it's going to do is going to send an ARP, ARP request. So ARP address resolu resolution protocol, say, okay, hold on that packet first. Let's send an ARP broadcast. When you look at that ARP broadcast, what it's going to be says, okay, who has this address? Who has address 192.168.1.50? Can you please tell address 192.168.1.110 the MAC address? I need the MAC address. Once he finds out the MAC address, he puts the MAC address there. That will be the destination MAC address. When the packet comes goes to the destination, right? When the packet goes to the destination, destination first thing is going to do is going to check the destination MAC address. If the destination MAC address matches its own address, then the packet or the frame is for itself. If it doesn't match, it's going to discard it. Yeah. Now, if we want to communicate, for example, say that we want to communicate with a remote network. So this device finds out, does it, and then finds out the network address is 192.168. Um, let's go back here. So 192.168.1. That's a network ID. So if we say ping and say you're pinging this address, 172.16, so you say ping 172.16.1.99, this PC already knows that that is not on the same network. That is on the remote network. So it will add the destination address here, source IP address itself, source MAC address that will be itself source MAC address, but the destination MAC address now is going to be of the router's MAC address here. So if he has, if he has the gateway's MAC address, good. It looks at the op table, op table. If he has it, great. If he doesn't, then it's going to send an op broadcast. 
broadcast. Now remember, the broadcasts are confined on the network. The router is not going to forward the broadcast. So that broadcast is going to be, okay, what is the, the gateway's MAC address? I'm looking for that. Once it finds that out, it will put it as a destination MAC address. Now the router, once it's received that packet, it says, okay, well, look at the destination MAC address. It's for me and my destination MAC address. So good. What the router is going to do, it's going to actually, it's going to strip this, take this off, clear it, and then put his own MAC address, his own MAC address as a NIC MAC address. And the destination MAC address is going to be router 2. Router 2, it's either going to find it uh, through our table or it's going to send another broadcast. And whatever the MAC address of router 2, it will put it here. When the packet goes to router 2, router 2 is going to look at that destination MAC address, compare with his own, says, oh, yep, it's for me. So it's going to strip all these two together. It's going to strip them off. And then it will put his own MAC address as a source and destination. As you can see, the, the source, the destination MAC address and the source MAC address or layer 2 header, Ethernet header, is getting swapped or is getting changed from the source He's going to change there, it's going to change there, and it's going to change there. So always routers or the intermediary devices, they strip layer 2 information. As well as other things that will change, they will change the frame check sequence as well as time to live. So 442 ARP address resolution protocol, like we said, for a device it needs to send the information to, for example, this PC needs to send the information to this PC here but it only has an IP address, only has an IP address, it will send the broadcast, address resolution protocol broadcast. So all other devices that look at the destination MAC address is not for itself. Well, well, it looks at an IP address and they can't match it because the destination MAC address is the broadcast. It looks at an IP address, it's not for them, so they just discard it. While 192.168.1.7 says, okay, well, that's my IP address, so I need to send an ARP reply. For each device, an ARP cache timer removes ARP entries that have not been used for a specific period of time. For example, in the Windows, we have that every two minutes. Same as the end, de end devices, as same as the intermediary devices, they have an ARP table. So here, for example, in the router show ARP, we can see that 192.168.10.1 has been resolved or it's because it's dashed there, that means that it's its own one has gone out. That's a MAC address. And it has to resolve this IP, this MAC, uh, this IP address into this MAC address. 443 ARP issues. So for example, ARP is a broadcast. And the problem with that is that um, the problem with that is that one device send an ARP broadcast and all of the devices is gonna hear it. So say that this is sending is trying to send it here. To this device here so he's looking for the ip address of that device every device hears that message if printers anything that is on the same network or same subnet it will hear that message so this device will discard it discard it discard it discard it discard it and this device will send an ARP reply so as you can see it can create a lot of traffic especially in the beginning so when you when the pcs they all switch back on and you can create a, a surge on the network. But after that, then everything will calm down. The, now the problem is that with the ARP spoofing. So for example, say the PC sending ARP request is trying to get to the gateway's MAC address. It says, okay, well, I need a MAC address of my default gateway. So my default gateway is 192.168.1.1 and send an ARP request. Now for PCB will ignore that because that's not a match. Router is a match, but imagine there is an attacker, right, in the network, and he's gonna say, "Oh, okay. Well, you're looking for that, and yeah, yeah, that's that's me. That's me." So now the attacker will reply, says, "Okay, well, that's my MAC address. Yeah. So if your default gateway, use that as a MAC address." Now the PC, there's nothing to know that it's coming from the attacker. Says, "Okay, well, that's my MAC address. So anything that it needs to go to remote network." remote network, it sends it to that MAC address, it puts it as a, as a destination. Now, when he goes to the switch, the switch looks at only the MAC addresses, it doesn't look at the IP addresses. So it's like, okay, forwards it to attacker, because the correct MAC address. 
Now the attacker can read the packet, and then the attacker will forward the packet on the default gateway on behalf of the root of the PC, and the gateway will forward it to the internet. The gateway will forward it back to the attacker, and the attacker will forward it back to the end device. So as you can see, the attacker now is like the man in the middle, but the end device is not, no way of knowing that it's actually someone in the middle finding out or reading these packets. Thank you for watching this section 4.4 address resolution protocol. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Next video 4.5 the transport layer. Bye bye.